chapter number 18, and uh, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 35, Luke chapter 18, verse 35, and it came to pass, as it was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Now in Mark chapter 10, it says they came, came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway begging. So we know this blind man, his name is Bartimaeus. And think about this, this is a real person. You know, I think sometimes we read these stories in the Bible, and uh, we, we don't think about that, that these people, just like us, and this really happened, he really was a beggar, he really was sitting by the side and he was begging and Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ really did pass by. So it says here again, it came to pass that he was come nigh to Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And that's what I'm going to preach on this morning when Jesus passes by. He cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And who was come near, he asked him saying, what will thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. Now Mark says, Thy faith has made thee whole. You say, well, which one is it, both? He's, he's healed of his blindness, and he's also saved. Now the Gospels don't contradict each other, they complement each other. One Gospel will give details, another one leaves out, and so on and so forth. Jesus said, receive thy sight. He was able to heal the blind man and he was able to save his soul. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, they gave praise unto God. Lord, I pray you bless this simple message. Lord, I pray you'll speak in our hearts, speak in my heart. We love you, God. We thank you we can come here and worship you. Thank you for the song time. Thank you for, Lord, I thank you for touching me. And I thank you for the word of God that never changes. And thank you that you never change. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you we have something that's eternal when everything else passes away. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Blind Barnabas is a picture of a sinner. Put yourself in his place. And think about what it would be like to be blind, which is an awful thing, and to have Jesus come by and Jesus heal you. What a, what a wonderful thing that would be. What a wonderful miracle that would be. Can I say that when God saves a soul, that's a miracle. That's the most wonderful thing can happen in a person's life. So we're going to look at Bartimaeus here as a picture of a sinner and put yourself in his place, hopefully before you were saved, what you were before you were saved. And if you're not saved, this is what you are right now. So number one, he was, he was blind. Bartimaeus was a blind man, he couldn't see. I believe blindness is an, an awful, awful thing. We had one of our Spanish men, Juan, and he just went to be with the Lord a couple months ago, but he was blind. And uh, he had diabetes and wasn't able to take care of it, and he, he lost his sight. He couldn't see, somebody had to lead him around. And it's a terrible thing to be blind. But there's something else that's even worse, and that's spiritual blindness. Most of the people in this world have no spiritual sight. They're spiritually blind. They don't understand the things of God, and they don't understand God. And a lot of these people have been blinded by their religion. That's such a sad thing. 
It's such a sad thing. The very thing that these people are trusting in, the thing they're looking for, is the thing that blinds them from the truth. That God's word is truth. Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. He said, you shall know the truth. The truth will set you free. So the things of God are spiritually discerned. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the illuminator. He's the one that shows us the truth of the scriptures, and he gives us the spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding, to understand spiritual things. A lot of people can't even understand the fact that they're lost. So he's blind, and not only that, but he's a beggar. He's a beggar. He's poor. He probably just has enough food to get by from one day to day. And uh, it's a sad thing when people are very poor and can't take care of themselves and don't have a place to live and don't have enough food. And some of you maybe figure you're poor, but compared to most countries, the poor people here would be considered rich in other places. Not only is he poor, talk about physically, he doesn't have any money, he can't work, but he's poor spiritually. When we're lost before we're saved, listen, we, we have, we, we're, we're spiritually uh, destitute. We're spiritually destitute. We have nothing to offer God. Bible talks about being poor, not just physically, but spiritually. You've probably heard the term total depravity. I believe total depravity is this, that we're, we're void of holiness, that we have nothing, absolutely nothing. The old song, Rock of Ages, one of the verses says, uh, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. You say, what does that mean? That means we have nothing to offer God. A sinner, a sinner listen, it's, we have nothing to offer him. God loves us because he's love. It's not because we're anything that deserves God's love or salvation or God's mercy. The Bible says this, what should it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what should a man give in exchange for his soul? You may have plenty to eat and a nice place to live and a good car to drive and all those things, but you could have all these physical things and still be spiritually a beggar spiritually a beggar. Everything we have is a gift of God. Not only this, but look at this man. He's, he's blind, he's a beggar, he's, he's pitiful. But not only that, he's, he's beyond hope. There's no hope for him. There's no Will's Eye Hospital. There's no eye surgeons. There's no salve. There's no, there's no cure. There's no eyeglasses. There's no contact lenses. I mean, humanly speaking, He's born blind, and he lives his life blind, and he's going to die blind. And can I just say this? For a sinner, without Christ, it's a hopeless situation. There's no, listen, there's no remedy. There's no, there's no cure for sin outside of Christ. But we do thank the Lord for Christ. Notice this, he cries out for mercy. He cries out for mercy. Here he is, he's there by the side of the road and he hears people coming, he hears a crowd, he hears shouting, he hears, and, and what, what's going on, what's, what's happening? Well, Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. And all of a sudden, he has hope. All of a sudden, he's excited. And he realizes, listen, there is one, there is one that can help him. There is one that can take away his blindness. There is one that has the cure. And he cries out for mercy. He, he asks for the right thing. Have mercy. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Over in Luke chapter 18, just a page away, look at verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, religious person, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee I'm not as other men are, 
extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Can you imagine how that publican must have felt? God, I'm glad I'm not like this guy. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. He was trusting in his own goodness. He was trusting in his own works. And listen, the Bible says all, all our righteousness is filthy rags. By grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves a gift of God. Not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven. But he smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that uh, exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Bartimaeus cries out to God, God have mercy on me. He knew, his, he knew what he was. He knew his situation. He knew he was a beggar. He knew he was blind. He knew he was poor. He said, God have, have mercy on me. And then the Bible says this over in Mark chapter 10. He cast aside his garments and he came to Christ. You know, when you get saved, there's some things you got to get rid of. There's some things you got to let go. There's some things that have to go. And he cast away his garment, that, that filthy garment, and he came to Jesus. So he asked for the right thing, and he came to the right person. There was only one. Listen, there was only one. Out of all that crowd, out of all those people, out of all the people in the world, out of all the people that ever lived, hey, listen, there's only one. The Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one. Thank God. Acts 4.12 says this. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Thank the Lord for Jesus. Amen. John 14, 6, Jesus said this, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Romans 10 and chapter 13 says this, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So here's blind Bartimaeus and he cries out to the Lord and he asks for mercy and he knows the only one can help him, the only one that can heal him, the only one that can save him is the Lord. So he asked for the right thing, he asked the right one, but he asked at the right time. He cried out when Jesus was passing by. When Jesus was close is when he cried out. He didn't wait. He didn't say, well, I got to think this over. Uh, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I really want to make this commitment. He said, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look with me over in John and hold your finger here. Chapter number five. And verse number two. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Our group just visited Israel and they went to the pool of Bethesda. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. So here's this pool of Bethesda. Bethesda is the house of mercy, the house of grace. And all these people around this pool and they all have some kind of physical problem. They're crippled, they're blind, they, just different problems that they have. And once a year, an angel comes and stirs the water. And the first person that gets in the pool after the stirring of the water is healed. Now that seems like a fantastic story. I wouldn't believe it if it wasn't in the Bible. But I believe every word in this book. So it says... They were waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole. So it didn't matter who you were. Didn't matter who you were, the first person that would come down into that water 
they were going to be healed. And it says, of whatsoever disease he had. So think about this. If it was cancer, if it was leprosy, no matter how bad this disease, it didn't matter what it was, you were going to be healed. So whosoever came was healed of whatsoever. But I want you to remember this. It was whosoever cured of whatsoever, but not whensoever. It didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter what you had. But it did matter when you got into that water. And let me just say this. Whoever you are today, and whatever you've done, and whatever you are, God will save your soul. But you don't get saved when you're ready. You get saved when God's ready. You get saved when Jesus passes by. You get saved when the Holy Spirit moves in your heart. And the Holy Spirit convicts you and reproves you and shows you that a sinner, that you're a sinner. And that's when you cry out to God for mercy and ask the Lord to forgive you. He asked at the right time. Think about this. Jesus was passing through one time. He's never coming back to Jericho again. This is the last time. He's leaving town. He's just, he just coming down the street. He's just walking through town. And he's never coming back again. And listen, if Bartimaeus doesn't get healed now, if Bartimaeus doesn't get saved now, he never will. There is a line by us unseen that crosses every path. The hidden, set, hidden boundary in put between God's mercy and his wrath. Let me read it again because I did such a poor job. There is a line by us unseen that crosses every path. The hidden boundary put between God's mercy and his wrath. Today we're alive, we're on this side of God's mercy. But if you step across that line and you die without Christ, all you have is God's wrath. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. This idea of putting off God, putting off salvation. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Paul says here, we don't want you to receive the grace of God in vain. You say, what does that mean? Well, Titus 2, 11 says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Unfortunately, all men are not saved. God gives grace to every person. But you have to act on that grace. You, you can't just resist the Holy Spirit. You just can't put God off. You can't just say no to the Lord. Because if you do, you're receiving the grace of God in vain. And then it goes on to say this. I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Listen, for blind Bartimaeus, it was now or never. He had one chance. He had one opportunity. And let me just tell you, he didn't, he didn't waste it. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And right there, the parade stops. And Jesus says, come to me. What can I do for you? He said, did I be made whole? He says, your faith has saved you. Thank the Lord. He believed. He believed. He was made whole and he was saved. That phrase, Jesus, thou son of David, we're not too used to that, but I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 1. I'll read you verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now here in the book of Matthew, it starts with the genealogy of the Lord, his ancestry. And the first thing in the first gospel that God tells us, Jesus, thou son of David. You say, what is that? Well, Jesus is born king of the Jews. And if you're going to be a king, there's a line. There's a line. There's a royal line. And what this is saying is that, that Jesus is in this royal line and he's the one that is king of the Jews. Right. The book of Matthew, the whole gospel of Matthew portrays Jesus as king of the Jews. 
Now here's blind Bartimaeus, and he's blind, and he's poor, and he's a beggar, but he wasn't stupid. He had some spiritual discernment, and he knew who Jesus was. Most people today do not know who Jesus is. Jesus Christ, superstar. Jesus Christ, somebody with long hair and looks feminine, and, you know, it just goes on and on. The Bible says he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. How sad. He came unto his own, Israel. His own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave him power to become the sons of God. He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He believed. Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then notice this. Over in Luke chapter 18 again, he said in verse 42, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. He believed Jesus was the son of David. He believed in his Messiahship, he believed Jesus was the Messiah. He was saved by what? His faith. His faith. That's the only way you can get saved. There is no other way. It's not faith and anything. It's faith alone. We're saved by faith without the works of the law. Not only did he believe, but he became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people. When they saw it, they praised, praised, they praised God. Here he is. All, he's not blind Bartimaeus anymore. He's not a beggar anymore. Here he is. He's, he's in line with everybody else. There he is marching on the gospel road following Jesus. Amen. Right down the road. What a, what a transformation. Let me ask you a couple of questions real quick and I'll be done. Do you remember the day Jesus passed by? I'm not talking about blind Bartimaeus. I'm talking about you. Do you remember the day when you were a beggar? You were spiritually blind. You, were, you had nothing to offer the Lord. And Jesus passed by. All of a sudden you could see. You knew who he was. All of a sudden, the light went on. You went from darkness to light, and you received your sight, and you cried out for mercy then. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Save my soul. Forgive me for my sin. When you cried out to God for mercy, you remember when he made you whole, and he saved your soul. And you began to follow Jesus. He got on the gospel road. Bartimaeus, listen, his life was changed. His life was completely changed. And his life was forever changed. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Here's this man, Bartimaeus. My family's going to come. Here's Bartimaeus, he's blind, he can't see, he's a beggar, he's poor, he's sitting on the road, and all of a sudden he hears the noise. What's coming? What's, what's going on? Oh, it's Jesus. Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus the prophet. And Bartimaeus says, no, it's Jesus, the son of David, the Messiah, the son of God, the king of the Jews. Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy. He cried out for mercy then. Thank God. Let me just say this. If you can't remember the day Jesus passed by, if you don't remember the day you cried out, if you don't remember the day you were saved, make this that day. Make this that day. The Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. 
Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I want somebody to stand here, Jason, Heather, whoever. If you're not saved, if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, put your pride away and come down this aisle and trust Christ as your Savior. Ask him to have mercy on you. Make this the day of your salvation. Maybe you're just here today and you're saved and you've been saved and you're following Jesus. Maybe you just want to come down this altar and just thank him. Thank God for mercy. First thing David prays for, Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my sin. I'm so thankful God saved me. I'm so thankful God changed me. I'm so thankful. I'm not what I want to be and I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm not what I used to be. Thank God.